Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Hello, and welcome to Nerdist Book Club live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. My name is Hector. Joining me, as always, are my lovely co hosts, Rachel Hine and Maud Garrett. Hello. Maud Six has entered the chat. Mod six. Mod nine has entered the chat. Rachel nine is here as well, and Hector Mod four is here. Is Hector or Rachel nine. Rachel nine, yeah, yeah. Don't take that the wrong way. Mod forty two wants to know about Mod six. Going, why are you Mod six? Mod forty two. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel, they would just be they would be a handful of people before us, and then we get into the chat, and we each have a number assigned. So you know, because that's where we're at. Um. Uh, to everybody at home, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to Nerdist Book Club. If you're new, please introduce yourself in the various chats. We have access to all of them. Let us know what some of your favorite books are. We're so happy that you, you're here because this month we have read Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. There Not to be confused with the sci-fi show that came yes. out roughly five years ago, which I was like, I Ooh. that name feels familiar. I watched all whatever four seasons of that show. But didn't connect it until. Also, recently. not not to be confused with the German show that was on Netflix called Dark, yeah. that Which also has matters to do with some some subject matter in this as well. Um, mm. Very happy to see everybody in the chat. Nerdist has let us know Dark Matter is also being turned into an Apple TV Plus mm -hmm. series. Interesting, interesting, okay. interesting, interesting. Okay. Uh, so we are going to jump right into this book. And, uh, oh, Jet G6 in the chat says, Dark Matter remains to be the only book I think I've ever enjoyed reading. <laughs> wow. Yay. Ever enjoyed? Ever? Bold, 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 bold. Um, did that's, that's we did it. That's intense. We went straight yeah, from, like, read it before. <laughs> Jet G went straight from, like, Cat in the Hat to Dark Matter. Like, the only two books they've ever enjoyed. There's, like, a childhood if you give a mouse a cookie and then all the way to dark matter, that's intense. Okay. <laughs> Let's get into it. This is the, about the book mod. Would you do us the honor of telling us about the book we just read in the past month? All right. So this is the blurb. So I will be reading this, I guess, as Jason, <clears throat> are you happy with your life? Those are the last words that Jason Desson hears before the masked abductor knocks him unconscious, before he awakens to find himself strapped to a gurney surrounded by strangers in hazmat suits, before a man Jason's never met smiles down at him and says, Welcome back, my friend. In this world he's woken up to, Jason's life is not the one he knows. His wife was not his wife. His son was never born. And Jason is not an ordinary college physics professor, but a celebrated genius who has achieved something remarkable, something impossible. Is it this world or the other? That's the dream. And even if the home he remembers is real, how can Jason possibly make it back to the family he loves? The answers lie in a journey more wondrous and horrifying than anything he could have imagined, one that will force him to confront the darkest parts of himself even as he battles a terrifying, seemingly unbeatable foe. Nicely done, Maud. Um, before we get into it, I think I would love to hear everybody's kind of overall thoughts on the book, takes on the book. I will also say that this book was something I went to the I went to the bookstore I went to a Barnes and Noble to try to get it and I thought it was going to be in the sci-fi section mm -hmm. and I asked for sci-fi and it was not there it's in the thriller section and Which that should have part of this poll that should have let me know that's true that's true that should have let me know but like what kind of book I was in for because I <laughs> guess traditionally speaking the sci-fi section is more like you know, um, I don't know, a, a bunch of different stuff like Foundation Trilogy is going to be in there. Classic sci-fi, you know, modern sci-fi, like media tie-in stuff. So like, you know, Star Wars and Star Trek books and all that kind of stuff is sort of there in the sci-fi fantasy section. This is a thriller, I think, almost before mm -hmm. a sci-fi book. But uh, uh, let's get into it. Who else had an existential crisis reading oh. this? Just Mod? Okay, cool. <laughs> God, I sneezed all over myself. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Maude, let's let's start with you. What are your overall thoughts on Dark Matter? Did you like the book? Did you not like the book? And how are you feeling about your life choices? Let's just say that, Rachel, I'm going to need those thriller recommendations because I love thriller, especially yes. sci-fi. I've been really, really into sci-fi a lot lately, but I really love this book. I'm giving it, it's a 4.25 for me. So I had to bump it down to a four on Goodreads. The problems that I had with it where it couldn't get more than that, there were the pacing issues. Mm -hmm. It was a little slow at the start and then it was a little kind of convoluted um, sort of like two, three, three quarters of the way through. They're my only gripes with it. I think that Blake Crouch has written a really easy to follow, really gripping, fun story. And even though it's on a topic, the, the multiverse, we've kind of experienced different versions or same, same, but different <laughs> multiverse versions of it. Um, it was it's one of the first books that has not allowed me to escape into. It has drawn me so violently back into my own reality where I have been ex experiencing an existential crisis <laughs> the last couple of weeks where I'm not only questioning my decisions in life, where I'm at, um, I'm wondering if more, the more, more diverses came through would they be proud of me or would they go, oh, sweetie? <laughs> like these are really kind of deep thoughts that I've had because of this book. Um, but there's a lot of other parts in this. I filled out the, some of the notes that I really wanted to discuss. Um, the themes in this book sort of being family, love, decision-making, regret, possibility. Um, so I really, really, I dug it. That, that's I'm awesome. so happy. Um, for those I, who don't know me, I read so many thrillers. Um, and I actually like have for a week, Rachel. Oh my god, well, I, yeah. I mean, it's like when I'm doing like anytime I'm not working or like doing something, which is a lot of time after work and before work, I'm listening to a book. I've actually had to sort of like tell myself that um, it's okay to be alone with my thoughts sometimes. <laughs> Right, but yep. that's another discussion. Um, no, I, I love it. And I actually, I kind of got a little burned out because I do read a lot of thriller mysteries that um, are usually written by women about uh, female protagonists. And, and uh, I feel like I had exhausted a lot of them uh, like about a month ago where I was like, I was just giving kind of like threes. I was like, okay, I, I get it. Like it was him, you know, like that kind of thing. Yeah. And <clears throat> So I've been trying to sort of find um, twists on the genre, and I've read a lot of gothic romance thrillers with sci-fi. It's kind of like Mexican gothic a little bit. I want like those I, recommendations. I've got like mm -hmm. four books that I will tell you immediately after this because they're well. I can find them too for the audience because you guys can know too if you like them. Um, we'll put it in the Discord for sure. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, what? just kind of taking also taking gothic romance um and the the way that the women were sort of treated as like oh they're just you know she's mad put her in the attic and really taking a sort of modern approach to like teen teenage girl like anger and frustration about the world that they live in and i feel like you know, women being angry, but especially teenage girls, like just being mad and these kind of monstrous things happening. Super cool. So um, I will definitely put those in the discord. I read this book a couple years ago. I think it was one of the first audiobooks that got me <laughs> hooked. Um, oh, yeah. And I, I, I'm interested to know what people think um, about the book if they listen to it versus they read it because I did um, chat with my a best friend about it and she wasn't listening to the audiobook and she said you know the writing style was so kind of like staccato in a lot like just certain things and I think other people are um <clears throat> in the chat are also kind of acknowledging that but I think it works so well as an audiobook because it's yes. it feels very like immediate and like you're there with him conversational but I, yeah mm -hmm, but I can totally the first person it. Yes. This, so much of the book is written in first person. It took me a little bit to kind of recognize, but wait, he's not speaking in first person. Anymore. Oh my God, because it's not him. Um, but having a really good sort of actor slash narrator who becomes that character, 
who allows that escapism even more in the sense where you are in his thoughts, in his brains, and you feel and hear that emotion. So it takes you on that ride with, as if you are him, but with him as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Maud, you gave it a 4.5 out of 5. 4.2, something like that? 4.25. 4 4.25 really in there. Rachel, what was your rating then? Did it change? Did you reread it or are you just going off of when you read it a few years ago? No, no, no. I um, I listened to it again um, and and really enjoyed it again. I'll have to look up what my former one was, but I think at least like four stars. Um, definitely like reading it again, you know, I feel like when I, when you re watch, reread like some, some sort of you know, story year, a couple years later and your perspective has changed. I like it even more now, I think. Um, cool. Just just kind of, I mean, I know it is super dark, um, but it was Thriller Month. But it's, it. I, I do really, I think the question sort of that you're, you were grappling with, Maude, and that we should absolutely talk about um, together is are, are kind of what draw me to stories. Um, and that, you know, I think there's something about thrillers too, where you have this person that is kind of all on the, like usually all on their own and has to figure this thing out and, and it ties into their life in some way, you know, the kind of concept or whatever is going on in their life. And so, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I, I forgot some of the key details about like when certain characters died and I was like, oh, no, it was so, br I forgot. I was like, damn. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. insane. It's pretty yeah. insane at places. It's like so insane, 5. insane. Yeah, <laughs> four, four point five, four point five. I, I'll tell you a little story about my experience reading it. I read it. Yes. I did not do an audiobook. I didn't risk it this time. Oh, the last one really ruined it for you. Really ruined it for me. It <laughs> I was like, no way. So I read oh, it. It was really good. It was I, good. And the, what the audiobook or for yeah. this one? Okay. Yeah. I In might... fact, I think that people are arguing that the audiobook is better than the well um, written. Okay. I can't believe I'm saying gonna say this, but nothing tops what I had in my head for okay. the <laughs> I, I wish but... I could see what's in your head. It's pretty Both cool. It was like an episode it started it's when it hits the fan, it was like an episode of Jason Bourne at one stage. Sure, like, sure. Not an episode, it's a I, movie, but it felt I like mean... Jason Bourne for me. So many different influences and so many different things, movies and TV shows, I think were, were creeping their way into my head as I was reading this. I At times, I think I was casting like, you know, Salma Hayek or or then it would cut to like Anna de Armas. Then it would cut to like Penelope Cruz. All of these actresses were like Daniela at some point. Just like, mm -hmm. you know, this this feeling, oh, this, this yeah, just kind of feeling this, you know, um, the the love story there. And I put in the Discord for Geek Bomb, I put in that reading Discord that when I started reading the book, I was listening to the music from the TV show Loki, which was Ooh. kind of perfect. It's by composer Natalie Holt, and she's going to be doing, funnily enough, Obi-Wan Kenobi for Disney mm -hmm. Plus show as well. And that music I thought was next level. And the other weird thing is by to, like the end of the book, like the last third, so just in the past few days, I was like, okay, I need to finish this out. I had downloaded um, the score, which they came out with like an expanded score a few years ago, brand new for the original Matrix movie. So like, it's like a full hour and 40 minutes of music that is not the songs, but like the, compo the composition from Don Davis. And I started listening to that and it started to really sync up and it was getting intense as things were ramping up. And it was so perfect and it it like it 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 basically ended i was finishing the last chapter like it was that level oh. of like oh. oh oh i can breathe and you know wow. it's just it's so so intense and it works so well this kind of great sci-fi you know intense music thriller music so here's the the the, the thing yeah no go ahead Ma. go ahead I was say, just to, to build on that point something that i've observed doing this show with you for so long is you almost do have this 4d experience almost so you're reading the words you're picturing it you're directing it but then the soundtrack also amplifies or can disrupt your experience with the book. Yeah. So I think yeah. Rachel and I sort of will rate a book a little bit differently. We will really look at sort of the story, the breakdown, how well the characters are written, the pacing, how you know how that all goes. But I think for you, Hector, a big part of you enjoying the book is the experience that you had totally. during it. 
Totally. Yeah. If I'm right. on a, if I read it on a plane Please. and there's turbulence, I don't enjoy the book. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> bumpy, bumpy flight. No, thank you. But you're right. <laughs> and I, I think um, another part of the experience that kind of tricked me was that I read the back little synopsis that you just read for us, Mod. And there's also some little tiny uh, pull quotes from different um, uh, uh, publications that reviewed it. And at the very top here from The Guardian, it says the most helter skelter race to the finish line thriller you'll read all year with a clever, mind boggling final twist. And I wish I hadn't read that oh, because that, it. that messed me up. But let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. This story has a happy ending because <laughs> I had this in my brain as I was reading the book. And now we can get into spoiler territory and talk about what happens in the book. So when Jason and Amanda was the woman's name that he escaped with, right? Mm -hmm. The psychiatrist. When the the psychiatrist. When they escape the for the first time and they go to a world that is Chicago, but they have just suffered a horrific virus and it was really weird yeah and i forgot really, about that plot point too. <laughs> right that that plot point i was like oh is this was this written pre-covid oh that's it very was. interesting yeah Crazy. that messed with me that yeah. scene where he gets there and daniela's about to die she's sick and they've already lost their son and she says i saw you die in our bed but now you're here you're my angel and he like helps her that whole thing was harrowing right it was uh, uh just it was really gut-wrenching because I was like, there's a final twist. I kept reading to the end of the story. And I was like, I bet you that this is going to be one of those books where it's like he never makes it home or he makes it home to a world he thinks is his. But then he learns somehow that that That's one world. That's the Simpsons, he... Hector. It is the Simpsons. That's the Simpsons, it's Simpsons the doing Simpsons. that to you. It is the Simpsons, Treehouse of Horror, doing a little bit of that. Yes, where with the tongues. Was, uh, with close the tongues. Enough. Yes, yeah, I thought he. Yes. I thought it, I thought it was going to end with a eh, close enough because he first wrote home. I want to go home, and that's where they it sent him. <gasps> and Amanda was saying, well, "No, you must have like subconsciously wanted like you 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 took us to the worst case scenario, a world where they died and you weren't there. You know that's that was the fear for him. But I kept thinking as reading the whole book, I'm like, man, I wish I didn't read that damn blurb from the Guardian because now I, I I felt like I was trying to predict the twist, and I went, I bet you that's the twist. Happy to report I was wrong. Right. Happy to report that when the twist revealed itself, the book went to a straight five for me and stayed there till the Yay! end of the book. Because I, I because I was already like over a three into a four with this book. And I'm like, I'm really enjoying it. I think that there are some issues here and there that could be kind of expanded upon, especially if they're going to adapt it into a TV show. I felt like it was the whole story was very much a male perspective. It's a great uh -huh male author, but it definitely felt like a guy who was writing about some wish fulfillment, his own values, his own beliefs, his own dreams, mm -hmm. his views on women, his views on sex, relationships, you know, a, a parentage, all that stuff. And I was like, it's, sometimes Daniela is too perfect. Other times I could feel that she's kind of a fully fleshed out character, but it, 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 it this is just kind of a slight thing. It often felt like Daniela in this book exists as the way that Jason sees her, which she's yeah. perfect. And that's fine. And that's great. So all these things, I'm like, man, maybe this book's like at a four. Uh, there's going to be some twists at the end. And then there's Jason's in the chat room. Jason's entered the <laughs> chat room. And I was like, oh, holy shit. Oh, we're in the end game. We're in the end game. How is this going to wrap up? And I was, yeah. so, I was like gripped. I was like, what the fuck? I like, know. What? Because how do you – that's also what's so interesting because I do feel like we, we have – you know, read a lot of um, female perspectives and protagonists, um, especially in genre space. But this is something, this to me, I agree with you. I think Daniela, it's his idea of her, but um, she was kind of still. Jason is such a, such a, a real flawed person who, and like at the beginning of the book, when you realize, the reader realizes, oh, it's, it's him. It's the, you know, evil genius him. But he, then you see, we see Jason one, original Jason grapple with the same feelings and the same frustration of being lost in, you know, this other, this other world and, and wanting what you can't have and all of that. But the way that he has to grapple with the worst parts of himself, um, which is obviously very difficult, but I, I think I, I just love seeing, 
someone who makes, you know, sometimes makes really bad decisions, really fucked up decisions, um, but is is able to kind of learn about them and and recognize them and you know not become a perfect person because no one could be. Um, but also with the chat room, like, how do you outsmart yourself? Yes. Yeah. Yes. We we I want to get into that because there's so much to talk about with basically these these major story beats. I would love to highlight this comment. I think it's great. C Villa Senor says, I would like to know what happened to Amanda after she left. I'd like yeah, this to be a book. Me this too. would be this would be a phenomenal follow-up book if they did this, whether it's Blake Crouch who writes it or even someone else. Like this would be something that I almost think that they need to address this for a show adaptation. Like you almost do need to give us some closure and have some, maybe that could be the season two. Maybe, you know, there's, there's literally infinite ways a story with this character could go, but I think that that's a great call. And I think making it a book would be, you know, that'd be an excellent ready player Two follow up if they did. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's yeah. funny because I, um, I've heard, you know, feedback of this, you know, that, it, it read like it wa it wanted to be a show or a movie or something like that. Mm -hmm. But I think that, but I, I, that's not a problem for me. And I think that was a, a plus for you probably Hector. Um, but also Blake Crouch, who he also wrote Wayward Pines, which was turned into a show. Mm -hmm. um, also and he's I have, a screenwriter. Yeah. Yeah. And I have put um, one of his other books up in the poll before, but now that we've read him, maybe it, we will win. Um, seriously. Um, but Recursion, also by Blake Crouch, is so good as well. Cool. I'm so with grief and and a lot of similar themes, but um, yeah, it's but does it say what it's about? Uh, yeah. it says here. Uh, guaranteed to melt Maud Garrett's mind. Recursion. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I feel like you gotta Blake? get it. Blake, that's with me. Uh. Oh, Blake is messing with us. That's crazy. <laughs> Rachel, that was not that funny. It's okay, Rachel. <laughs> because I really believed you. That's why. I'm, because I was, you were like, oh, it says here, and I was like, oh, what is it? what? what so, is it? <laughs> I really like was buying into it until you got there. In <laughs> some so, reality, there is a book printed myself. that. It says that in some reality, which is the real mind F. What do you guys what do you guys want to talk about next? Do you guys want to talk about the ending with the Jasons? Do we want to go back and talk about some of those like themes? Plot points. What do you okay? Or do we want to do overall themes? Like because I do feel like you're right. Yeah. There are sort of acts of of the book, and then we can talk about themes and stuff through. So I would say act one is that it it's him getting kidnapped him having to confront his own mistakes, him being in the other world, and the entire time where he's in that first world and he's trying to figure everything out and survive, get his bearings, learn about the Jason who did this to him, learn about this other reality. I think that whole thing is sort of act one. Maude was saying that there's some pacing issues a little slow for this section. I will say I the, the pacing issues that I, okay, so Blake Crouch can write a pilot. The guy mm -hmm. got a lot of purposeful, very concentrated, great information straight out the gate. Mm -hmm. We see the relationship with his wife. We understand who he is. The fact that he has to go celebrate the friend that had the life that he could have, mm -hmm. like that, that smart, really, really, really well done. I didn't pick up that he was kidnapping himself for a little bit. I was just like, what information does he have? Um, did he kind of stumble upon something and they're trying to extract that? Wasn't too sure. My big problem was, and I think that this is because what would you do in that situation? And Jason did something that I wouldn't. And that is if I'm sitting in a room and maybe this is saying a lot about me and I'm like, probably shouldn't have this conversation. Let's get into it. Let's do it. <laughs> if I'm sitting in a room and people are like, Maud, great to see. Maud, you did so we are so proud of you. You crushed it. We can't believe you did this. That level of respect and almost like adoration, that would be translated to me as a safe place to be. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have warning bells. I wouldn't have red flags. I would be like, I would feel that I would be comfortable enough to say, you have gained my trust. You obviously know me. I have a few questions. I don't know where the fuck I am or who you are. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, you know, there's enough that we've kind of established that there is an experiment and I'm okay to ask questions. And I think that that prolonged 
kind of uh, antitrust. Okay. So it's like he ran straight away and then you learnt that he wasn't able to trust them. For mm -hmm. me, that kind of pacing, the fact that he yeah. kind of came back as well, didn't make sense and it was a little bit bogged down because you just had amazing pacing straight out the gate. You had mm -hmm. the penny drop moment and then it took, it was a little bit tangential for me. Mm -hmm. a little mm -hmm. bit I, can, I can see that. I think also um, it's funny, even when he's scared, like when he's being led by Jason too at the beginning and he's thinking like, God, am I just a coward? Am I even going to fight him? And I think there's also an, just the element of like, a, like your body being in shock of him just be, you know, in that response. So I interpreted it that way. I was wondering too, if anyone felt like it was too obvious that it was him, because I had read it before and I couldn't really remember when I sort of put that together because we get a lot of information that kind of leads somewhere there of like, okay, well, where's the other him then at that beginning? And so it took him a while to really, to, well, a while to figure that out. Um, and I was wondering if that was something that people picked up on or felt like, oh, we could have moved sort of the reveal around a little bit. Like if he had, I don't know, what do you guys think? I, I think that's a great question. I can't remember if I clocked it, that it was Jason kidnapping Jason immediately, or if I had like, pieced it together from reading the synopsis and from, mm -hmm. you know, and from us talking about what we've been talking about for the past couple months, or I don't know if I clocked it. I don't know if it was too obvious. I don't know if it wasn't obvious enough. All I remember is that the writing in that sequence, when Jason was Jason one was just going over everything in his head in the moments of driving. Let me try to text mm. my wife. Oh shit. My phone fell Oh, It's lit up. Hopefully he won't notice. Like all of that stuff was so Ooh. tense that it almost made me feel like, man, Blake Crouch, author, has either really done research or like is really able to put himself in the shoes of somebody who's going through this. Because I, I, I was reading it almost to a point where this almost sounds like this could be found through research of when this happens to people, what people go through, studies have shown, whatever it was. It just felt so, so authentic. Mm. I, and I think to your point, Maude, that he wouldn't play along immediately is a good criticism because it's like, why not get information? Especially if they're telling him you're disoriented, Jason, you've just come out of the box. Like we totally get it. Take your time. You know, why isn't he going like, where am I? And then they're like, okay, Jason, this is where you are. This is that you're back after eight months, like all of that stuff. But instead he really kind of immediately is like, I gotta go to the bathroom. And then he tries yeah. to break out. And, and I think it might be because Crouch wanted <laughs> true, which is, which is like, again, Maybe if it's if it's a few chapters that you read right one after the other, it makes sense. But if you read chapter one, and I think chapter one ends with like he wakes up in another, you know, he, he can't believe what he's seeing or something. And then you uh, the next day or a couple days later, whatever, read chapter two, then maybe there's too much of a separation to be like, you know, what's this guy's state of mind? I know my explanation behind it. I've yeah. seen so many aliases and James Bonds. And it's like when you have a co-op like operation like that, you don't know everyone on your team. You right. can have sort of like uh, this is, and this is where my mind went with it completely. Like I truly thought that the guy kidnapping him was on his team. They had to hold an appearance. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. Interesting. That I thought it yes. was the best or the former friend. Uh, ooh, you know, I thought he was an, an agent that he would laugh about it with later, but like. Oh that they were, they were on the same team. It was like a covert agent. But, you know, like if, you, if you're then in Paris and someone's like, hi, you know, I am the Parisian person and you don't know me, but I know everything about you and the mission. And you're like, okay, that's what it felt like, compartmentalization. We've got to get to a safe house. Yes, 100%. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so that's why I had this like inbuilt, you're not super bad. You're taking me somewhere safe, but I can't question or argue at the moment. Mm -hmm. And now that you've sort of, you're all here, I instantly trust you all. That no, that's totally I see. Sense. I would have never thought of it that way. Really? I definitely thought like there's the a couple on the same page as me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's very interesting. Uh, I I think I was on board with the decision. First of all, to have Jason one break out of that facility, I think because Crouch wanted our protagonist to go and like have to learn about this world and how it's different, like firsthand, as opposed to somebody coming in and being like 
you're Jason Dressen. You are a noted physicist. You are, da, 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 you know, like an info dump. He had to go and like actively like search and like, I can't yeah. find Daniela or my son doesn't exist. All of that stuff. Sort of like, sort of like when Green Goblin is in the new Spider-Man movie and he's like, there's no Oscorp and my son, yeah. he like, like he probably searched for his, you know, for his people. Um, and mm. then he's stealing donuts and putting them in his jacket. <laughs> But I think going back as you guys were describing it, I am now remembering, I think I clocked that it was Jason who kidnapped Jason. Because first of all, the kidnapper was really, was really rude. He was really mean. It was personal. He, it was personal. And then there were a couple moments where it was something like, you do this, you went to this school. And Jason one's like, yeah, how do you, how do you know about me? How do you know about this? And Jason two's like, you have no idea. And I was like, oh, that's him. I have an it idea. Was, yeah, it was something where it's like, you don't even know. <laughs> you have you're, you're, you don't have a clue, do you? And I was like, oh, that's also him from another reality. Like that's that's what it is, especially because, yeah. especially because the first part of the book, now this would be very different and very interesting if Blake Crouch set this, sets this up where Jason is like maybe having a fight with Daniela. Maybe it's just kind of a little bit more of a standard issue, marriage after a couple of years scenario. But the book opens and he's like, I'm in my kitchen. I'm with my sexy, beautiful wife. I love her so much. Our son is so cool. Our son, Charlie is so cool. He's doing art at the table. I love him. And I'm going to go see my friend and then bring some ice cream back. And I love my family and my life is awesome. Like it almost felt like that. So that when dude gets kidnapped, I went, this is another Jason who's going to prince and popper replace you in your life. And he's, and so I was, I was like off and running, but okay. anyway, Jesus Christ, it's Jason, <laughs> not Jason Bourne. Uh, it's Jason. Uh, I, I think that like, a... again, like I felt it was Jason Bourne esque because of the repeated Jason. And again, Jason, like that's Jason, what's Jason. been built. Uh, I love that Colleen though, in the chat has said, and then we had the traumatic scene with the bullet through Daniela's forehead. And I think that's the moment he's trying to grasp <sighs> and go into what's safe to him. And yeah. we realize collateral. We realized how high the stakes are and that anyone who is spoken to when they start being tortured or killed in front of him, that's when shit hits the fan and he's like, mm -hmm. not safe, must go. And that's yeah. when, again, Amanda witnesses that and she's like, not what I signed up for. What the hell? And, like, imagine being in a position where you realize going through a door will take you to another world and you will likely never, ever return. And that's when I realized that I was Amanda. Because <laughs> yeah. I have a dog, yeah, and I have nothing else that I would stay for. <laughs> it I, would. If someone, if someone I knew like that and had respected and was in that position, and I saw the people, I would. Too, you know, I don't know. I don't think I would go to. Well, if someone came with me, I'd go in. But um, <laughs> someone I liked came with me. <laughs> <laughs> Companionship, the key to very everything. important distinction. Um, not everyone, um, but yeah, I thought because there at the beginning there's a little bit of sort of the the normal I think wish fulfillment or like regret of your life of what if you know especially for both him and Daniela had these potential really am exactly um, amazing you know potential career paths and they're so happy with what they have but. They do, uh, you know, we don't get inside her head as much, but clearly, you know, there's, that's a very human thing to wonder. Um, even for smaller stuff, like what if I'd gone to this call, you know, not smaller, but you know. Um, so having him kind of not really want to go see his friend because his friend is the one who made it and is with the fancy people and is like, yeah, I'm single, why would I, you know, whatever. And and so that's why I, I thought I was like, hmm, I wonder if in the other world he, his friend, de help, you know, develops this or does whatever it was, we don't know at the time, and had always wanted Daniela and had always been jealous of him and maybe, you know, was trying to like sneak into, I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. And then, so him going around in Daniela, that shock, I forgot how bad that got um and just gasped out i was like no mm. <laughs> oh my God. it's That's rough where it's you're like okay no one is safe yes in here like and then board. can you can you also can you just can you imagine going to another world as it is and and being replaced by a doppelganger of yourself but also like to see somebody that you love whether they recognize you or not and then they die and you're telling right yourself well that's we're together to like two. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah that's... They, they were intimate. He bonked came, her. Yeah, they yeah. were literally in bed, and then just yeah. the, the it was like the spray against, and I was like, oh, wait, does she? <laughs> it was yeah. super super sad, and 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 then you kind of get into the really scary sort of. They cannot let any of these secrets get out. The yeah. the you that never had a family just focused on work, didn't learn how to like care about mm -hmm. other people in the same way. And he would have been fine with it. Um, but yeah. also that this is a that huge, emotive, which was huge, great. huge program, billions of dollars and not even connected to the government. So like either one would be like dicey and I'd be afraid to be working for any company like that. But like, you're just like, Oh, these, these people have no rules. They've are in a compound. No one knows what's going on here. He's already been missing. It's easy to, you know, set him up for all this stuff. Um, and that, that when they bring Richard, his friend Ryan. in Ryan and they Ryan. kill him, they torture and kill him. Richard? Yeah. Ryan. Ryan? Ryan? Why do I think it's Richard? Anyway. Because it's an um, R word and he's a dick. Yeah. Well, there you go. Um, and the fact that he's just, he's also, it's like he came in to try to, you know, get his way in and just. What's your cat I, doing? What's your cat doing? Do you What's, see a tail? There's a little ears and a little head. He's taking a bath. Oh, his sweetness. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> his little tiny beep, beep. Oh, sorry. So distracting. Oh, that's great. Oh. Imagine if your cat was shot in the head and you had to come back to the reality to find your real cat. How can you even do it? It's impossible. I have people I love too, Hector. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. Me too. But I can't even. I, I mean, can't this... even think about that. I would. It was. Okay. So years ago when I read the comic book, The Walking Dead, it made me think about the unlikelihood of like a zombie apocalypse and like what my plan would be. And it made me think on what would my plan be? And reading this book has honestly made me think like, what would my plan be for like convincing people in my life that I am who I am convinced, yeah. you know, like that was such a trip to try to think about, you know, because it's similar to uh, Spider-Man spoiler alert at the end of Spider-Man, there is a big magical thing that happens in like, then you have to watch a character decide, okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to talk to you and I'm going to reintroduce myself. I'll reintroduce myself to you. And the other person's like, okay, and I'll recognize you and it'll work and we'll figure this out. But that is just. Especially mm -hmm. if the other ones, are, like it, they are you too. So anything that you would say to prove your point, they would say the same yeah. thing. And so yeah. into that next section, once they, once you know, he's in their like weird dungeon and, and Amanda comes to, to help him. I was so nervous for her the whole time. I was like, please not again. Can we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a different Amanda did not make it, which was also harrowing. But oh, once, no. you, yeah. once they go into, once they go into Schroding, Schrodinger's cat box, which will never not be funny to me. Um, uh, a, what did you think about like the science elements of, of how it worked and B, um, how the actual sort of once they're in that corridor and starting to explore the world, what did you, what did everyone think about that? So I just recently finished the Netflix series, dark three seasons. And there is, there is, there is <laughs> some, I almost hit my glasses off. Yeah. calm down, Rachel. It's okay. Calm down. It's the best there, show. There, there are some visual similarities or some concepts that are kind of similar, but that show deals with time travel. And this one deals with traveling into other realities at the same time, but then acknowledging mm -hmm. in those different realities, maybe time has, ha things have happened at different places. So it kind of does, could feel like time travel, but I thought that the visual of this big, huge black empty box that mm -hmm. turns into a corridor that lasts forever with infinite doors that you could just run and run and run. And it didn't matter which door you ended up in because as soon as you opened it, that's when everything would collapse into itself and then become the door. Yes. And the fact that you needed to be on a drug to kind of unlock your brain to be able to see all of this and do this, it made sense for me. It was visually interesting. It was something I could I, I could follow. And it still added drama because then it became about, what are you thinking? What's a character feeling before we open the door into the world? And Which then- another psychological element. Yes. That and the, more the, of a thriller the ampules that they had that were windling down 
made it made me it made me think like you guys should be smarter than the Avengers with this. And and instead of trying to like we only have a certain number of pin particles to go do this time travel experiment. Why don't you go to a world that has unlimited ampules and then snag them? Like that should have been your first thought is like, I want to find a world that has all no, the ampules, true. all the ampules we need. I need uh, uh, I 500, 500 ampules. And then you go into a world and you can get them. And then you go back into the box and you go, all right, we're good. Let's, let's try. I let's would keep never trying. have thought that. That's too <laughs> smart. That's really great. But, but yeah. I, but, I, but when That's I thought about that. That's a discovery, by the way, Hector. W- but when I thought about that, I remember thinking that um, it, it's tricky because something should still be rare enough that out of every reality, only Jason two in the reality he came from figured this out. But then multiverse theory is like, but that also includes infinite. And I'm like, well, you still need to make it special because if it's infinite, 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 then the whole world is just going to be overrun by Jason's. It's just going to, they're, <laughs> they're, they're, they're tribbles. Like it's impossible and it, it makes yeah. no sense. But I think that it still made it rare to be like, out of all the worlds, only one was able to do it. So only one had these ampules. You got to have that ticking clock, says David Nichols Jr. I agree. And it 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 made it stressful. I almost thought it, they were going to pull a galaxy quest as well, where like the only way it would work is once Jason whittled down to the last one would be the only, even if he, in, in the first step, writing in the diary, I want to go home, I want to go to my Daniela, even if it, if he was correct in everything he felt that somehow psychologically it's like, no, it's only going to work on the last. Does what I'm saying make sense to you guys? I thought that that was going to happen, but I don't think that they pointed to that. I think that it was just like, he just finally found the right feeling before landing in that last world. And the very last option, it was stressful. It was interesting to see him and Amanda. And it made me think like, man, I hope this book, it would be, unsatisfying but it would be understandable if this book ended with like and then he never got home quantum leap he just stayed in this thing he stayed in this quarter with amanda and then was just with amanda and they fell in love and they stuck stayed together i felt like the book could have also because of that guardian twist at the end (laughs) could have ended like that but anyway that's that's how i felt about act two ma did act two have pacing issues or did you enjoy it Well, let us know what Zelda thought about the book. Zelda, did you enjoy Act 2 or did it have pacing issues? Someone outside? Yeah. um, Well, I will say also in terms of there being like one Jason who figured it out, I did like that there there was this Jason that figured it out, but then once he he went one way, right? He went to one world and obviously that'll branch off into a bunch of different um, timelines, but not ones that are going to cross over necessarily. Whereas because original Jason had gone back through all of these places and they're all on the drug and do, you know, part of the box, that's what I really loved about them sort of creating like the fact that not only were there lots of Jasons that got to that work to the home world again, but that they weren't even variations on the bad one. They were yes. variations on him and his yep. experience, like since he got sent to the other world. And that to me was just like, so, cause it's, it would be easier, I think to fight or, you know, Ill, if that's where you're deciding to go with that. Um, this person who stole you versus the other versions of you who just went through similar harrowing shit that you just went through. Yeah. Why that's am I where my existential one? crisis spawned from, where it's like, let's just say you got me a month ago and every single decision spawned a different version. One said yes, one said no, one thought mm-hmm. about it, one waited on it, one did it immediately, you know, boom, you just waited out. In that month, how vastly different it can create. And then you're dealing with this multiverse corridor, which I thought was so well done because immediately you apply logic. Well, this is door one, door two, door three, door four. How far do we have to walk? If we walk four to the 4,000th door, is that far enough away from this world in like the map of things? And it's like, mm-hmm. no, 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 it's an infinite kind of thing. And it's bigger than binary in a way. Um, and I immediately when we realized that there were multiple Jasons and they had come to that 
same place, but they'd gone through different experiences to get there. When you open a door and that experience that you have in that world, how has it positively or negatively affected you in that way? How many of them saw the pandemic world where they saw their loved one die in their arms with bloodied eyes and they were basically like melting into nothing. The most traumatic thing that you could experience. I think back to the Wilson um, castaway dude who was just like disheveled and couldn't even communicate. What did he see? How long was he stranded somewhere? Mm -hmm. Because they started at the same point and took different versions or saw different things or dealt with different ways. And so when all the Jasons were in the same room and the majority of them were still on par, but every now and then you got a guy be like, fuck that, I'm going to kill you. You're like, yeah. what happened to you? He saw some shit. He saw yeah. some shit. Yeah, it's that, great. I thought too that, and this can kind of lend into sort of like how we would potentially react in some of these things if, if we were chatting with multiple versions of ourselves. Um, but I, this is, I don't think it's, it's necessarily in his character to do this, but I thought, and this is probably why this is maybe what I would do. I thought I was like, well, why would I get to be the best one? They all have these memories. Am I the, like, am I the original? Like, how, how do you even know that at that point? And yeah, again, why do, why do I get to be the one? Like, I feel like in that scenario, I've, Every single one of me would be like, I'm not, you know, like, right, right. Someone finally has like enough courage. Like, that I, it is <laughs> um, I, I, th I thought it was interesting that the Jasons immediately turned on each other. And I wonder yes. if that was a reality as well, where it's like, you know what, we're all here. We must kill the others. I'm like, that's still you. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that if I were to meet me, A, I would want to learn all about what they experienced and then where they're at now and get that temperature check. I, I hope that I would have a little bit more empathy. Um, but I thought that at the same time, they're all trying to make the decision over the same people. And it's like, well, if you're all trying to make that decision about said people, why don't you let them decide? Mm -hmm. And that took a little bit too long to get there for me. Mm -hmm. Oh, I I thought it was perfect, but I think it perfect for perfect. him because he I, is this kind of yeah. the version of him that didn't make that choice and didn't grow, you know, raise a kid and and all of that stuff. I, I thank you for highlighting that because agreed um, <laughs> that he is arrogant and you know selfish and driven purely by yes. Yes. his obsession with science and being the best and figuring this out and so that to me makes and and part of why you know original jason who is also flawed because he is also not really engaging with what daniela wants on the same you know until later than he should have and i think that's what's interesting about it being yourself because you you would have to face like yeah I, you know whatever things that I would do, I'd be like, God, we're so annoying. Why are we doing that? You know, like just having that, like, yeah. no matter what your response is, even with Jason, he's like, God, like they're all going to kill me. They're going to know about the hotel. They're going to, why didn't I think of all of these things? Because again, how do you outsmart yourself? And I would have never thought of like, do a, you know, pick something random, but he's a scientist. So he's thinking yeah. about things. I, I, I love that. I would have thought about doing something random, but I would not have. Yeah. The plan he came up with where it's like, I have to get Daniela to come pick me up at a police station. And then from there, I'm going to ask her to get us another cab because I don't want her car to be followed or tracked or whatever. That was so intense and so smart and so sad when she picks up the phone and he's like, I love you so much. I'm arrested. I'm so sorry. Come pick me up. And she's like, I just saw you go to work. Like uh, Jason, what's wrong with you? And it's like the most life-changing phone call for him, but she's just like, "Ugh, this is the worst." Can you, I'm not bringing your son to the yeah. police station, yeah. Jason. <laughs> I think, I think, Mod, Mod, you have an absolutely, totally correct point where it's like they collectively should have just talked to Daniela and had her decide, her and Charlie. But the thing is, is like what I liked about what they did with Jason before we get to this point is that 
he lives when he gets to this final reality, which is the correct one. He has no money and no nothing. And they bring him down to a level where it's like, he has a full beard. He's a homeless guy. He's living like this for, Gaunt. for a while, for like days or weeks. Gaunt too. He's lost weight. He's, he's not eating. Gaunt. Yeah. I'm watching, I was watching dark on Netflix. So I was picturing adult Jonas with this, like, you know, with this beard. And I'm like, this yes. dude has, oh my God. has, Seen some shit, and when you get to this level, he was even like, I don't even know. Will Doc for me? No, no, not at all. What did you say? You said you're in season two. You're in season two. Yeah. The stranger. Yeah. Are you? Are you watching the right show? Doc. <laughs> yeah. Starring Jonas with that little yellow raincoat. No. It is him. Yeah. It wasn't confirmed for me yet. What are you talking about? Dream. I feel like it's anyway. I thought it. I thought that was a season yeah, one I reveal. Everyone, I want everyone to watch it, so just watch it. Um, <laughs> I thought that was a season word. <laughs> season one. TikTok. TikTok. Oh. Those German oh. accents are great. You guys gonna make us uh, make me watch it again because I will. The, uh, the point I was trying to say was. Mod is correct that the logical thing to do would be like, okay, all of the Jasons are here in the chat room. We just got to ask our wife. But they're, you're so messed up. You're so messed up from everything you went through. Mm -hmm. We get only a taste of what the other Jasons could have gone through as the tease when Jason 1 is in the hallway and then there's just a naked Jason running through screaming. I was like, dude, what is that about? <laughs> Yeah. Because because we got the tease of one of the worlds they opened was going back to the world, but seeing themselves get killed. And I was like, oh, OK, yeah. all bets are off. Like anything could happen in any of these realities. So when we saw the naked one running through and his back is all opened up and he's like, ah! I was like, OK, anything could happen. So to know that all of the Jasons descended on this final world, I thought it was a fantastic, fantastic final twist final would decision he kill you would I, in that situation I, I he, here's what I would do I think that Jason was right to be honest with his wife when he goes and gets her and Charlie and says this is what's happening I'm the real Jason and the one you've been living with has been an imposter for a month on top of that I created a bunch of offshoot Jasons and they're all here and, and Daniela all the real Jason as well yes, the Daniela very smartly she goes well then What's the difference between you and those guys? And our Jason, Jason one, he acknowledges there is no difference. So he does come up with this plan of like, we just have to do a lottery. And he reasoned that we didn't want anything bad to happen to Daniela and Charlie, that above all else, because of how much this guy puts his family on a pedestal, that this plan would work. And they all kind of agreed to it. And at least the original Jason did with like, this is the only way they'll be safe. We want them to have a life. So let's just do it like this. The problem was when he was honest about the lottery plan with Daniela and she, after spending a day with him, she goes, well, I don't want that to happen. I don't want you to be replaced by Why some other person. Your choice. You know, I don't want that to happen. So she goes, I want you. And that's it. And then so if I were Jason and I heard Daniela tell that to me, I'd be like, then it's going to be me, baby. It's going to be me. I'm going to kill them all. Let's do this. Let's go. Let's go. Get Charlie. But I, I thought that that was a really interesting take as well, where it's like, I'm willing to do anything to make sure I have my wife and son. And it's like, so if your wife sees you kill and murder, why would she want to be with you? Because that calls him out. She calls him out. And at the end, when there's a bunch of Jasons, it was so tense. I was like, this is terrifying. They're just trying to get to the box. Daniela's the one that's sort of, I, I don't know if it even said this in the book, but I pictured that Daniela and Charlie almost became human shields to Jason one that they were like, no, you're, like, you're, you're going to let the three of us go because it's me, you know, like, and, mm -hmm. and, but I think it's really true to Jason's character, even the one who, has had a family and, and has learned a lot more about empathy and, and all that good stuff. Um, that he, that he would be like this sort of protector father husband thing too. That's very much like, you know, ingrained in him a little bit, especially after everything he's been through getting to this point, he's just thinking, I've seen her die several times. I've yeah. seen worlds without her worlds with her, I've seen her not recognize me. Even the version of her, like they had dated two and a half months, 15 years ago and broke up. That part crushed me too. I was like, damn, that would be so painful. They still had a connection. And, but they still had it. And she could, and, and, but the fact that he, it takes her being like, no dummy, it's up to me. This is my life too. It's our son's life too. That felt very 
realistic for his character that he was so gung ho about getting back to her and saving her and yeah. protecting her that he didn't stop to think like, what would she want? <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I also think that the, the love that Jason has for her is pure. I mean, we had it from the beginning of the story, but I also think that if you, if you were a person who went through that, that it would, again, just like Tom Hanks in Castaway, he loved Helen Hunt so much by the end of that story. And he was like, you are what kept me going. And she's like, I moved on. I'm so sorry. And then Tom Hanks has to move on. Beautiful mm -hmm. message in that movie. Beautiful, you know, story. I think that Jason in this, Jason one in the story, loves Daniela more than she could ever love him because he went through what he went through. And it and, and Rachel, you're bringing up all these things that he saw in different realities. And that, that, that when you finally bring that Jason back to his Daniela, his world, he's going to be like, I'm going to hold on to this with everything, every fiber of my being. My last question to you both. What kind of world do you think Charlie brought them into? Fucking Minecraft. <laughs> That's the first thought that I had. Is a fifteen year old dude. Um, just, just, just vert ramps and skateboards everywhere. Just like, oh, sick, dude. But also, kind of, like he was an artist too. So something like, depending on, I forget what type of art he said he was. I mean, I know he liked anime, but like anime, maybe. Yeah. But some, I, I, I feel like something that a, a world that was really. Be like beautiful and safe. Like if I was, you know, 14, 15 going through this, yeah. I would just be like, I just want to be safe yeah. and never have to deal with any of this shit I, ever again. <laughs> my, my theory is, and I don't know if it's possible because you know, when you're 15, how much control over this do you have? But Charlie going through what he went through, learning what he did. Do you think it's possible that Charlie is thinking about, I just want to go to a world where like that girlfriend that I just had is also here and maybe there's not a Charlie here so that I could but that, find, that, you know, that kind of messed me up a little bit because like who I am and my life experiences and what I'm capable of at 15 is not even close to what I have so when they're like we trust you completely I'm like you know what don't do that relinquish it but, <laughs> uh, but what's really important to him yes isn't the big picture really important? No. And uh, we're not showing the comment, but Miss Necromancer said every woman has big, giant, jiggly anime titties. Oh, I know. Then, <laughs> yeah. No, so no, no. What is important to a 15 year old boy? And it is. But it's I like the fact that this sort of this girl. harrowing experience, I feel like it would, it would more likely be like, I think they might have to. Do they only have one ampule left? I can't remember. I think Which so. Like I, you know what? Yeah, Mod now. If they didn't, now, maybe they would have to like recalibrate a bit because I feel like he wouldn't necessarily in that moment. Neither would I like you'd be trying to think of all the things, but like you need a world where there isn't a copy of you of all three of you. I wouldn't be thinking that at 15, the most no, important. I, yeah. wouldn't, I probably wouldn't think that like in the me. moment after all this shit just went down, I would be like, just get me out of here. Take me maybe to that, a world with cats. <laughs> Maybe that would include that would fall under the umbrella of safety, that feeling that Charlie was thinking about. Mm -hmm. Maybe the parents. I mean, I, I know the parents gave it to Charlie because they're like, whatever you think, those other Jasons ain't going to be able to follow us. Like, mm -hmm. go ahead, you little weird 15 year old. Take us wherever. And then and when then we're safe. But I also hope now, Mod, that when they open the door that everybody on that planet just has huge anime titties and that mom and dad look at Charlie like, Charlie. Well, <laughs> Close enough. It's like the Simpsons. We'll just have to stay here. <laughs> yeah. Donut. What's a donut? Yeah. Uh, gr great. Last comment I want to highlight from Jay Buntrock says, I want a little epilogue where a cop finds all the Jason bodies at the cabin. Just like, what the hell is this? What happened here? They're all the same man genetically. Maybe for the sequel with Amanda. Uh, okay, right. Real quickly. They did have a case of ampules. Um, because Jason too and his redemptive moments, that's right. So they could course correct, okay. but okay. also Lisa and a few others were saying it, it was all three of them. So sort of like, if oh, you think no. about, oh, we're all finally together, but him sort of leading it so that the kind of power of like the dark minds of adults who have already seen some shit and then yeah. seen lots more shit, just trying to get sort of his like innocence mm -hmm. into the sort of energy uh first but they're all kind of I, I imagine they're all thinking like safe no other copies of us like mm -hmm. a livable world especially jason he's probably like please no pandemic. 
Yeah, yeah it would be great if <laughs> the the innocence of Charlie's brain was was that. And the parents are like, Charlie, how did you pick such a perfect world? And Charlie's like, I don't know. I just wanted it to be cool. Like it's like a simple dumb thing. Yeah. And they're and Jason just like, oh, I should have <laughs> thought yeah. like that. That would be great. Um, folks, this was a fantastic episode. We have some fun stuff planned, including the reveal of what we're reading next month. The time is now. The book we are reading for the month of May, Star Wars themed, is Kenobi by John Jackson Miller. It's a legends book, Kenobi by John Jackson Miller. And we're going to be doing an episode talking about that show live on Wednesday, May 25th at 5 p.m. Pacific. So tune in for that so that you can join the discussion uh, do not forget to send us your recommendations by using hashtag Nerdist Book Club on Twitter or by joining the Geek Bomb Discord where we host our weekly book club after show. Maude, tell us about that. Yeah, unfortunately, the reading section of that Discord is locked. You do have to be a Patreon backer to access that, but to be a Patreon backer, it's as little as $5 a month, and not only do you get the after-show access, which is not broadcast anywhere, where all three of us jump in and talk about other questions um, about the book with the community, uh, but you also get two episodes where you get to jump into the conversation during four hours of Twitch broadcast for another book that we do in the first half of the month as well. We are covering The Martian by Andy <gasps> Weir for May, and I'm pretty much already halfway through it, and it's really good. And my mum is going to be joining us Yay! for that book, which is awesome as well. What but if a you deal. Want to join us what a deal. That's uh, so good. For this after show, uh, jump onto patreon.com slash geekbomb, sign up to the, the smallest tier that you can you get immediate discord access you can join us there and trust me when i say we talk talk about books there 24 7. Awesome. Yeah, guys, so we'll, put, sorry i'll put book recommendations if you like stuff like this there as well yes go join us for the geek bomb after show right now we're gonna go have some fun and otherwise we'll see you guys at the end of may talking about kenobi bye awesome Hello thanks y'all